morning. As we prepare to celebrate the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time, our parish family extends a prayerful welcome to visitors from throughout our diocese to their cathedral church and to all who are gathered with us as our sisters and brothers in the Lord. Please join in singing the processional hymn, Praise to the Lord the Almighty, which can be found in your bulletin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, as we gather in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we do so with hearts humble and contrite, seeking God's mercy as we acknowledge our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come, without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. Sad 
satisfy the desire of every living thing. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The hand of the Lord feeds us, he answers all our needs. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, Twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord.
The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. How beautiful a statement of faith that is, for it engenders hope and is meant to be lived generously with sacrificial love. But many times in my life, and perhaps in yours as well, this statement, this truth, this article of faith has been challenged often by my own misunderstanding or stinginess or fear or sinfulness. But if you look at the statement, the hand of the Lord will feed us. He answers all our needs. Think of Isaiah in the first reading when he is telling the people whether they be rich or poor, of exalted station or marginalized, come, come to the banquet the Lord has prepared for you. Worry not about its cost, the price has already been paid. Come and feast with the Lord. How beautiful is that? That's the invitation we accepted in coming to Holy Eucharist this morning, isn't it? But in a much deeper and more profound and extraordinary way than even the prophet foretold to the people of that time. St. Paul underscores this profound gift of love by reminding us that there is nothing or no one that can ever separate us from the love Christ has for us. The love Christ has for us. Think of that. Not height, nor depth, nor sword, nor earthly power, nor personage, nor exalted station, nor wealth or popularity. Nothing and no one can separate us from the love Christ has for us. But I, in the freedom of my will, can separate myself from the Christ. I can become once more selfish or insecure or let my fears dominate me to the point where I grow very stingy in sharing the blessings I have received. And that brings us to the beauty of the gospel. It's one of my favorite ones because there are multiple stories at play here. First, Jesus is in grief and anguish. Now remember, St. Paul says, anguish will not separate us from the love Jesus has for us. His anguish is based on the death, the martyrdom of John, his cousin, John the Baptist, who was beheaded by King Herod. He seeks a distant place, away from the people, even away from his disciples, that he can ponder this great loss, that he can grieve. But the disciples track him down and in doing so probably attracted great attention. Have you seen the Lord? No. Have you? Do you know where he's at? Where may he be found? So many people begin to look for him. They follow the disciples and gather in vast numbers. The Lord is moved with pity, even in his anguish, and he cures them. This is a profound, profound gift of his love for you and for me. <coughs> Pardon me. So then, as the evening approaches, what happens? The disciples come up to him. Now, they have an ulterior motive. Oh, Lord, dismiss the crowd. You've had such an exhausting day. You're in mourning. You're grieving. There's a lot of people here. It's late. Send them away to the villages where they can get food and nourishment and have rest for themselves. It's a good idea. The Lord says, no, you feed them. What? Now here's a giveaway. Oh, we can't feed them. We've only got five loaves and two fish. That was a quick answer. How did they know they had five loaves and two fish? Because most likely it's human nature. Let's see, there's 12 of us and there's thousands of them. And well, we, we'll just keep it behind our backs till they're all dismissed and 
we'll wish them a happy day and a safe journey and I hope the restaurant's open when you get there. Huh? But we're not going to share. Feed them, he says. No. Give it to me. And they do. And they probably think, great, now we don't have anything either. He blesses those meager gifts. And they come back and fill 12 wicker baskets. It's incredible the depth of God's love for every soul in any time or circumstance. What a lesson to the disciples, huh? That when you have, do you value what you have? When you have it, are you willing to share what you have for the good of others, even if you've earned it by the sweat of your brow, huh? Are you willing to share it. Early on in the pandemic, (coughs) pardon me, when the churches were originally closed to public liturgy, had a very good parishioner come up to me and express their dissatisfaction with that choice. And they were displeased with me as well, angry actually, I think, that I had gone along with the closure. Why didn't I stand up and keep that church open? Huh? And I said, well, the church is open, thinking I could scoot around the matter or the issue. And it's true. Did you know the cathedral church, since St. Patrick's Day, when the church is closed in March, there's only been one day that the cathedral church hasn't been open. And that was to clean the church, to prepare for the reintroduction of public liturgy. That's pretty good. And I told him that at that point, we weren't quite as, we weren't back into public worship yet. Well, that wasn't satisfactory enough. And I don't blame him because he said, well, you get to receive every day. I see you on live stream. I said, well, good, then I'm your penance for Lent. He didn't find that humorous either. So I said, I am, by my vows and promises, required to celebrate Mass each day for the salvation of the world, in Jesus' name, to the glory of the Father and through the Holy Spirit. So yes, I do have that great honor, even though I am unworthy, to receive the Lord but I receive it in spiritual communion with you. So let me ask you a question. How many masses before the closure was the cathedral celebrating a week? How many masses a week? Can you guess? And he said, no, how many? I said, 15, as we are even now, since we've opened for public worship, 15 masses each week. And I said, how many Masses each week before the closure did you go to? What? I said, which would have been my answer to. Or I would have said, oh, I think my cell phone just went off. I have to go. What? I said, how many Masses? I'm not accusing you. I'm just asking you. One, which was good. He kept holy the Lord's Day. I said, what about the other 14? Even I don't go to all 15. That's what Father Scheidecker's for. (laughs) So why don't I go to more? Do I ever put myself beyond what is the minimal requirement? Do you? Do we find in the Eucharist the most immeasurable, inestimable treasure of the church? The greatest gift of love, Holy Communion. I think we do, but there are times when we have it, we take it for granted. When it's gone, we get upset about it, but we're really not upset at others. We're upset with ourselves. But here we are, 
And we're so fortunate because there are so many people in so many lands, even within our own country, that cannot as yet come to church. And here we are. So we have an extra responsibility, if you will, and an extra opportunity to come to Mass more frequently so that we can offer our Holy Communion for them and be in spiritual communion with them who cannot come. It's a great gift, for nothing can separate them or us from Jesus' love for all of us. Let us be glad and rejoice in that love and become what we receive to the world so that the world may know him, love him, and serve him with heart and mind, soul and strength. And let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, let us offer our prayers to God, the giver of life and source of all that is good. That God may bring all Christians together in unity of faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Francis, our Pope, Austin Anthony, our Bishop, and for those who minister in our church, that they may lead us in the way of love taught by Christ Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those among us who are poor, hungry, and without shelter, may they come to know Christ's presence in our care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Lily Mandeville and Thomas Lachere and all the baptized, May they always remain close to God and faithful to their baptismal covenant. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember all our beloved dead and remember the prayers written in our book of intentions and the prayers we offer now in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, whose ever watchful providence rules all things, we humbly implore you to remove from us whatever is harmful, 
and to bestow on us only that which will be helpful to gain eternal life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Austin Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Children, but we'll 
tell them to the next generation the glories of the Lord and his might and the marvelous deeds he has done. You gave us bread from heaven, O Lord, having in it all that is delicious and the sweetness of every an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of your body and blood. I love you and desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be separated from you. Amen. Please join in singing our hymn of praise, Word of God, Come Down on Earth, which can be found in your bulletin. Touch our hearts and breathe. 
Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. This is Charitable Giving Weekend. If you have a gift to leave for those who are in need within our community, those gifts are always gratefully received in Our Lady's Chapel. Thank you all, those viewing us live stream and those gathered before the holy altar of the Lord for your pilgrimage of faith, letting nothing, God willing, separate you from Christ's love for you. Be confident, be not afraid. Be filled with hope and be an instrument of his peace. Seek that love within and among you and be that love to the world in his name. Thank you for seeking to do so with heart and mind, soul and strength. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go forth in peace to love and to serve our Lord.